Greetings and welcome to The Remote Real Estate Investor. My name is Tom Schneider and I'm joined by... Emil Shore. And Michael Albaum. And today we got a fun topic. We're going to be talking about the six mistakes you'll never make again. Let's get into it. I heard of a great question to ask people, uh, you know, when you're trying to not... Trying to understand how they're doing, you know, without leading the witness. Uh, what's on your mind? Ooh. Ooh. I have... Uh... What's on your mind, Michael? Uh, what's on my mind is got a lot of balls in the air, which I feel like is a, a standard thing that I've been saying over the last two years. So just uh, got a couple of refis in the works, got uh, my rental unit upstairs for our new primary that we're house hacking, going to be getting tenanted here shortly. So just making sure all the cookie crumbles are getting baked into a cookie properly, if uh, that's a saying. <laughs> We're putting it back together. We're putting Humpty Dumpty back together, man. <laughs> Why not? Why not? How about Emil? What's on your mind? Oh, man. Uh, I was chatting with Michael this morning, actually. Uh, we have a weekly call to just talk about what's going on. And I was chatting with him about this person that I've been wanting to hire, a position I've wanted to hire, but I keep putting it off. And I'm not sure if right now is the right time in the business to hire this person. And I just keep, I talk to other people who run businesses and they, they, they kind of keep nudging me to do it even before I'm ready. So that's been the biggest thing on my mind. So this week I'm, I'm going to start putting together, documenting some processes and putting a job ad out there to at least have some conversations and hopefully find this, this unicorn of a person I'm looking for. In the words of the water boy, you can do it. (laughs) Uh, yeah. (laughs) If you're if you're a content marketer and you like creating uh, briefs for writers and editing content, please please reach out to me. I would love to chat with you. Free plug, thank you. At East Shore at Gmail. Uh, Emil Shore at Gmail. Yeah. Sweet, Tom. What's on your mind, my friend? I love that question. It's just kind of you know, cuts a little deeper. Um, so got a baby. I got like a three week old baby. So not sleeping in longer stints than like two or three hours. But uh, to be fair, the the first baby was uh, I was it was much worse uh, worse than that. I don't know what the right word to say. Anyways, uh, so got got a very good three week old baby, but still a three week old baby. Uh, Besides that, just uh, yeah, (laughs) doing it. Um, I wish I had taken a longer (laughs) paternity leave. Uh, I think I kind of blew it on that front in the, the retrospect, but who knows if there's a third one, I'm going to take a good two months off because that is special time. So that's what's on my mind. Um, cruising along. Let's anything else, guys, anything else in your mind before we get into the topic of the day? No, it's super exciting to hear yeah. everyone's happy and healthy. Everyone's happy and healthy. That's right. All right. So this is the six mistakes you'll never make again. I love this topic and I think some of the oddly the best way to learn about real estate is just not <laughs> learning about other people's mistakes and not making them. <laughs> um, so a really juicy, helpful topic. And to start today's discussion on uh, the way we're going to divide this is we're each going to take two. And Emil, uh, you're going to go first. What is a mistake? We'll do a, a a snaking order here. So Emil, what is a mistake that you'll never make again? In, in my life, or are we talking about real estate investing? <laughs> well, 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 let's make this remote. Let's, this is the remote real estate investor. Uh, but you know what? Let's not put ban- boundaries. Let's live, live in the open space, right? So uh, you can take this in any direction you want, Emil. Oh, geez. All right. Let's go back to when I was five years old. The first mistake I ever made. <laughs> it's a long time without making a mistake. <laughs> I know. For real. Well, the first one I remember. Who knows all the other ones? Uh, okay. First one I have is buying the cheapest properties. So this was something when I think I bought my first property I looked at, you know, I was going for the cheapest to maximize Excel cash flow. And something you realize after uh, a while or not even to maximize cash flow, Excel cash flow, maximize Excel returns, right? Cash cash on cash. And what you don't realize after a while until after a while you've been investing is that you know, a fifty or a hundred dollar difference in those slim cash flow margins completely throw off your returns. So, right, let's say you're looking at trying to hit a ten percent cash on cash return, and you end up buying. You know, I'll, I'll throw out a property I bought years ago for sixty three thousand dollars in Memphis. Right, if 
if there was a variance one month of 50 or $100, that destroys your your cash on cash. It completely changes the numbers. Like anyone who's listening to this and runs their numbers, change your projections by like throw an extra expense of 25 or $50 a month. Just small things, right? On cheap properties, they they make such a big difference in the percentages both ways, right? So something I didn't appreciate for a long time was actually like nominal cash flow, not just percentages. Totally. Get the rosy glasses off. Take them off. How long into owning that property did you realize like, uh oh? <laughs> it was at the turn, honestly. It was like, oh, okay. Like, I mean, the turns always ruin everything, but you really <laughs> see how much of a variance, like, again, even a hundred dollars or like, I guess that's on a monthly, like a thousand dollar expense one time a year just crushes these these cheaper properties on like a percentage basis. They can still be good quote. investments, but it's like you gotta you gotta like play around with the numbers to see even a small variance from your numbers like changes the percentages a lot. Yeah. I love that quote. And you know, Emil Shore, February 14, 2022, the turns always ruin everything. <laughs> <laughs> turns are the worst man yeah just keep people in there of a lot of first-time investors it's like just getting so excited of that you know fifty thousand dollar investments are you kidding me you know such great returns yeah. but yeah hammered on that um michael what is a mistake you'll never make again a mistake that i'll never make again is rushing and kind of pressuring my property manager into accepting a tenant that they don't feel really great about That was on my very first property ever. I talked a lot about it, ended up doing tons of damage on the property and it's just a total headache. And I was so concerned because now here I have this mortgage payment and this property that has expenses associated with it and no tenant in place. And I was like, we got to get someone in, we got to get someone, we got to get someone in. And so against her better judgment, she capitulated and said, okay. And it was the worst tenant that I've ever had. Uh, and that she may have ever had too. I think she told me that once. Like, yeah, I remember that tenant. That was the worst tenant I've ever had too. So, um, just like take your time and be calculated and try to be level-headed with stuff because that was a very emotional decision. I had a job at the time, like a really strong paying W-2. I could afford a couple months of vacancy. I could afford like several months of vacancy, thankfully. But I was just so kind of like a meal looking at that return. I'm like, oh, my return is going to get shattered. And so, didn't listen to my gut or my property manager and really ended up paying out the nose for it for a long time, <laughs> for a very, very long time. Capitulated. Yeah. That's a word, great word. Word of the day. That's a word of the day. I, uh, I love it. I, I think there's, you know, there's like long-term decisions and like selecting who is living in your property. Hopefully it's a long-term decision. Yes. And one of those things where, yeah, you know, you could feel the the pressure boiling every month that passes if it's not occupied, but Man, so much more expensive to refill that that yeah with a bad tenant. Yes, yeah, totally, totally. It All right, Tom. Goes along the theme of turns suck as well. Yeah, so. exactly. Turns, suck. <laughs> t- t- turns ruin everything. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. go along uh, a similar theme as Michael. So a mistake that I'll never make again is not getting into the details of my property management agreement. So, uh, Mm. usually with like terms and conditions, like, oh, cool, new phone. Oh, accept this. Oh, there's 270 (laughs) pages of to read. Accept all. (laughs) Yeah, Apple's made us very good at that. Yeah, and with a property manager, there are reasons that you might want to not just accept all. So, the mistake that I made, I had a property in Florida, bought it, um, it, 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 it was, it was good. It was occupied. I had a, a turn that come up, turn suck. Uh, the turn, the <laughs> price to, to do the turn was kind of expensive and it had appreciated just mammoths. Uh, that's not a good use of language. I got to think like Michael. What would Michael say? Not capitulated. What would be, what's a lot, a lot of appreciation, Michael. A crap ton. A that's that? a technical term. <laughs> yeah. A crap ton of appreciation. So, um, I decided to sell the property. You know, this is one of the awesome things about real estate. You can you can make moves like this, uh, fed it right into a 1031, and it was like a like a stock split. I ended up getting two properties from that one. And at the point I sold it, uh, my property manager, they, you know, had some escrow funds that I had left in there from just in between tenants and, you know, as maintenance or whatever come up. And I I emailed them like, hey, send me 
give me my money, you know, like, <laughs> you, don't, you don't own this property anymore. And they're like, oh, no, this is the breakup fee. And I'm like, what? The breakup fee? Are you kidding me? So this um, Mamma Jam, this bad Mamma Jamma, they, <laughs> they had a little line in their fee structure where if I sold the property, they had to retain management or charge me like a month or two of rent. And um, that is a mistake that I'll never make again, not reading the property management. Like basically what's all the other, what's all the ways that you can make money? And what's all the different ways that you can take money from me? And uh, one of them was selling. So that's a mistake that I will not make again. Um, all right, guys. Have you come across that language in any other PM agreements since now you're, it's on your radar? Uh, no, I haven't. And that's like something I will explicitly ask for is like, is, you know, more or less like what's all the different ways you can make money. And usually there's a section within the PM agreement of like breakup fees, you know, how do they charge for maintenance? How do they charge on rent? And, uh, you know, it'd be a fun episode. I'm seeing more property managers charge a flat rate versus a percentage of rent. Uh, future mm. episode idea, future episode idea is, uh, uh, ruminating. Ready for the ready for the TLDR? Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So that's mine. I, uh, this is not going to be a traditional snake draft. We're going to go right back to the top of the order with Emil. Uh, Emil, what's the number four thing? What's a, a mistake that you'll never make again? Uh, so this was a mistake I made on my most recent property, and. It is what I call, or actually it's not what I call, it's what I heard Michael Zuber call a B property. So he he classifies three types of properties. He has the A, B, and C. A is turnkey, good to go. You don't have to do anything, lift a finger, it's nicely renovated or it's in good condition, you're good to go. Uh, a C property is on the other end of the spectrum. You know, probably needs a, a partial gut rehab or a full gut rehab. You know, you have to do a lot of work, but you're getting a good deal. Uh, you just have to put in that the time and energy and the extra money to to make it look nice. The B property is the the in between. It's a property where uh, it's a maybe the rent is a little under market, but you know at the turn you're gonna have to maybe replace the cabinets or uh, some tile in the shower. You know, like a bunch of little things, little not little things like several cosmetic things, they add up so much more quickly than you think. And they aren't usually sold at that much of a discount, these B properties from what I found. So I bought this triplex. It wasn't like a, when I bought it, it wasn't like a premium price tag, but it wasn't, it wasn't uh, a great, amazing steal of a deal either. Right. But in my head, I kind of just looked at things and I was like, oh, this will probably take like $5,000 total, maybe maybe 10,000 to fix up. Uh, long story short, it was more like 25, 30,000 to get it all fixed up. And I don't know, I think these B properties are just like, they're not the way. I think it's either you buy the thing that's that's good to go, the A, or the C where you're, you're putting in the energy, but you're getting an awesome deal. So uh, I do not like the B properties anymore. It's fun when we do these episodes, I try to guess like, in my head what you guys are going to do. And, uh, that's a good one. I, I, I did, that did not come into my mind as like a potential one. And yeah, you, you could think with the little, the little nicks and dents, you could be able to catch a, catch a deal, but it's like, yeah, go, go in the deep end or go in the baby pool. I, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That my experience. I don't know. Other people may, may say, no, those properties are great for me, but just my personal experience, I won't, I won't go for those anymore. Yeah. I, I've probably done like the majority of my deals have been more like B-ish range and it hasn't like, you know, caught me, caught me too bad. I mean, I've had some terms that were like pretty ugly where I bought it occupied and then. And then surprise. I guess the question is, did you go in knowing like your estimate for what it would require to fix? Was it on par with what it actually cost? No, it was, it was more expensive. I think it wasn't as dramatic as, as your uh, use case going from, was it like 500% over like, you know, from 5,000 to 25,000? Yeah. 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 Like four yeah, or five yeah. X. What yeah, I thought not it was as intense be. as that, but I, I don't know. I think that's an interesting way to think about it of like, you know, either go, go in or go out. It's cause there's, there's a lot of like these little things that you're like, oh, we might as well just replace it now or make it nice for next time. Right. Like carpet that could go another round with a tenant or just whatever, get, get vinyl in there now or something. You know, it just like, I think with these, it's like, you're going to end up replacing a lot of things anyway, when you do a turn on like these 
properties that are like so-so and they have a lot of um, things that are like halfway or towards the end of their life. I don't know. That was my experience. I like it. Yeah. And I think kind of to your point, Emil, if this had been an A property and all that work had been done already, you may have paid an additional 30, 35,000 for the property. I'm not sure, but you also would have been able to finance that exactly. as opposed to coming out of pocket. So when you look yes. at your return metric, it still would have been better, even though you're in it for the same amount of money. Exactly. Great point, yeah. Michael. All right. Number five on the mistakes you'll never make again. On the mistakes I'll never make again, I will never, ever, ever, ever get caught in a loan with a hefty prepayment penalty without negotiating it down. So I was working on this massive redevelopment project that I've talked a lot about on the podcast. I was leaving my job at the same time as I was looking to acquire the construction loan for it. And I found a bank that would give it to me. And I was just like so focused on getting the deal done. And they're like, yeah, this is the prepayment penalty. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like, I don't care. And now I'm on the back end of that. And I'm just like, God, this is killing me. I want to refinance so badly, but I'm stuck in this loan because the prepayment basically makes it cost prohibitive to refinance out of it. And so I am just kicking myself because it's expensive and I can't stand the lender. So like, there are just so many reasons for me to want to leave, but I am stuck. Terms, baby. T's and C's. T's and C's, T's and C's. It, it's funny that the people who have these uh, additional fees and things later on, right? Like your prepayment, Tom mentioned like a property manager who, who has like fees when you sell, they always end up being people you don't like love as much. And you're like, it's almost like they've added these things because they churn through so many people or something. I don't know. They know they suck. And they're like, oh, we got to keep our hooks in these people. Versus yeah. the good ones, they're like, yeah, we don't need it. Like, you'll yeah. stay. They trust well, their know, service. You'll stay. Yeah. yeah. Culture. Bad culture. Got to seek out good culture vendors. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, look at what the prepayment is. And to anyone listening out there that finds a prepayment in their loan, it's negotiable. Like, that's a term you can negotiate. I think everything is negotiable. So, definitely add that one to your list of things to look out for and things to push back hard on. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll round Solid. us out here with the the final mistake you'll never make again. And this one is a, uh, a close friend of mine who got involved in real estate. He uh, bought, a, bought, a, bought a property, bought a rental property, and it was doing pretty good. And he got to a point where he uh, needed the money back. So it, and it was like kind of a speed thing to get the money back. Um, and so he listed his property to sell. Uh, he got a buyer. Uh, the buyer made some like outrageous claims about, you know, oh, the, the, the roof, that's like, you know, $15,000. And like the house was, the house was fine. Like it was like a reasonably hot market too. Um, but I, I, I guess this mistake is like not talking to my friend or I don't know. It, it, this is more like it kills me, but he ended up like accepting this low ball, you know, funds off the, the sale price. Uh, and he sold his house and it's like, man, especially at the point where you're at the exit, like every one of, you know, those, that big chunk of money, like that's just gone. That's just like money just disappearing. So I guess a couple of mistakes and lessons, like on the acquisition side, you know, <laughs> Why not, <laughs> at, you know, make, make those kind of requests unless you're, you know, at risk to lose the deal. And on the sales side, you know, don't ever get yourself in a position where you have to sell uh, quickly, like have the right reserves or whatever else is going on in your life. Um, Cause that's just, you know, hard money coming, coming out, you know, uh, I'd say the other thing is, you know, people should just list their listings uh, a little bit longer than they think they should, you know, leave it for sale. I think it was in Blink or one of those Malcolm Gladwells, there was like a, a survey on real estate brokers that they list their properties longer because um, they like, no, they get it. Like more eyeballs, the, you know, the incremental increases in uh, potential income by more eyeballs on it. So a wide variety of a spectrum of, uh, uh, I don't know, ex from that experience that I'll, I'll share is the the final mistake. But I think the big thing is, if you can, like, don't put yourself in a position where you gotta you gotta sell. And um, if somebody makes a ridiculous offer back at you, be okay with walking away from the deal. So, uh, a cornucopia of things with that. That's a really good one, man. That's a really oh, good one. Yeah, brutal. Um, all right, so 
I think that's it. Anything else you guys want to want to cover today? No, I think that was all that was on my mind. Yeah, that's all on your mind. That's that that's the way to open questions. What's on your mind? It's like I like it's that. sincere, right? And it's you can't you can't give a cheap little answer to that. You know, you can't say, "Oh yeah, good, good, oh fine, oh yeah, you know, nothing." <laughs> Oh, that's what's on your mind? Yeah. <laughs> You're, pretty shallow. You're a damn liar. You're too shallow. Um, <laughs> you, you could get a really weird answer like the turkey sandwich I ate for lunch. Yeah, but think about how interesting that is. Like, oh, you got cranberry sauce on that bad boy? Are we talking avocado, sprouts? <laughs> what kind of turkey sandwich are we talking? Yeah, it, it does at least get some small talk going. In, right. yeah. in my experience, it's a little more sincere, you know? It's, you kind of come into their yeah. corner. What's, yeah. what's in your mind? Less rehearsed. Less rehearsed. Um, I like it. All right. That's the six mistakes you'll never make again. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed our episode, please share it. Please like it. Please subscribe. We got a YouTube channel as well. Uh, And as always, happy investing. Happy investing. Happy investing.